Please give your perspective on why polyamory is bad for the individual and society. Well, I think the fundamental reason is, there's a bunch of reasons. I mean, the first is, societies seem to function better, that is, less violently, let's say, when there's one woman per man. If there's many women per man, there aren't many women for every man. There are a handful of men, let's say, a minority of men, a Pareto distribution of men who have a disproportionate number of women and a lot of men who have none and those aren't happy men let's put it that way uh, they're men who are very likely to get up to no good very rapidly so there's that then I would say the women who let's say a man has many women and let's say he's a desirable man for that matter, just for the sake of argument. If he has a variety of women, then those women don't have much of him. So they don't get to establish a real individual relationship with him because it's going to be fragmentary. And I don't believe that that's satisfying for people. I think that what you want as much as you possibly can is to have people around you with whom you can weave your life together over the short term, medium term and long term. It adds depth to your life in a way that almost nothing else can. And so what you do, and so I've been speaking more about permanent polyamorous relationships. You might ask, well, what about sequential ones where, you know, you're, which is in some ways indiscriminate, indiscriminate, indiscriminable from, uh, um, well, from just casual sleeping around. Um, I think the problem with that is that to sleep around casually is to imply that sex is casual. To imply that sex is casual is to assume implicitly that it can be divorced from the rest of life, emotional life, motivational life, values, all of that. And you can divorce it, but you pay a big price for that. I, th I think the price you pay is like the virtual, it's, it, well, the word psychopathic keeps leaking, leaping to mind, leaking to mind. <laughs> yeah, good old Freud. Um, you have to reduce a person to the casual pleasure of a transient sexual interaction in order to sleep around casually. And I think that once you establish that as a habit with sex, which is a deep, a deep experience, if you'll, if you'll do that with sex, which is a deep experience, then, and you learn how, then what makes you think that won't transfer to everything else that you do? I don't see how it can fail to. So, you know, you could say, well, monogamy isn't a very good solution. It's like, well, life is a fatal, sex, fatal, what is a sexually transmitted disease with a 100% fatality rate too. You know, there's lots of really complex problems for which we only have the best answer we can come up with, which is not, not a utopian answer. But I would say, and I think the evidence supports this as well, that stable monogamy is the best solution that we know of. And it's also the minimum necessary requirement for the stability of children. So polyamory, it's wrong. It's wrong. It makes men violent. It increases inequality in, in, in the manner that makes things dangerous. It makes it impossible for women to have a deep relationship with men. It makes it, it facilitates the, uh, what would you call it? The transformation of sex into something casual and then that spills out into the, into the rest of the world. Um, it deprives the people who engage in it of the opportunity of establishing a stable, long-term, long-term, mutually, uh, mutually satisfying. It's more than that. 
mutually beneficial relationship you know because a good a good marriage the people in it g gain more than <laughs> they're more than twice as good right it it the 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 benefits aren't precisely linear so you lose that it destabilizes the situation for children there you go man that's a lot of things that aren't about it that aren't good that's for sure